Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam to all. I welcome you all to this Japa session. And as we begin the new topic of Shadvida Sharanagati, so we will try to see the first part of it. That is Anukulyasya Sankalpam and Pratikulyasya Vajanam. So what we will do is we will try to recite the verse once again. And then we will go through this part. Mukham Karoti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Girim Yat Krupata Maham Vande Shri Gurum Dina Tarinam Parmananda Madhum Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram. So we'll do it in English first and then based on the time either we will do in Hindi or then Telugu. So this comes under Chaitanya Charitamrit Madhilila. Anukulyasya Sankalpaha Pratikulyasya Varjanam Rakshesha Siti Vishwaso Goptrutve Varanam Tatha the six divisions of surrender are the acceptance of those things favorable to devotional service, the rejection of unfavorable things, the conviction that Krishna will give protection, the acceptance of the Lord as one's guardian or master, full self-surrender and humility. So yesterday we have seen the two different examples, how we have taken the war example and we have taken the doctor example. So when we talk about war or doctor, the surrender is sometimes, you know, it feels like it's that we have no choice. You know, we have no choice. That is why we have to go to someone's and we have to just give ourselves. But this uh, Anukulyasa Sankalpam or Pratikulyasa version of all these steps here in the Bhakti are not disempowering or it is not that we are left with no choices. We can make all the choices at our own pace. And this is very, very empowering. So we are not choosing Krishna. We are not choosing the things to serve Krishna just because we have nothing to do. No, we choose because we want this thing to do. So we have seen that, you know, how it is very empowering. And uh, we have seen these examples through war and uh, the metaphor of doctor. Now, today we will try to have some little bit elaboration on the first two things. That is Anukulyasya Sankalpam and Pratikulyasya Varjanam. So if we see in our life, every moment is uh, making, a, you know, we make choices. Okay, from the morning, the moment we get up and the moment we till the moment we sleep, we actually make choices what to do, what not to do and all. Okay, and not only that, even when we are in sleep, we make choices, okay, based on our consciousness. So every moment we can consider that as the moment of choices. Now, these choices we can make on three different levels. That is instincts, impulses and conscious intelligence. So we will begin with impulses. Now, impulses means that we don't think much about it and we just make the decision. Just like sometimes, you know, if we are feeling uh, very hot, then immediately we may just switch on the fan. And sometimes when we go to the supermarket, when we are at the billing section, then there will be so many chocolates or other things will be kept on there. And just where we were waiting and we look at them and we just pick them. Or sometimes when a mobile, like let us say now we are listening to the class and sometimes any Facebook notification or any Instagram notification which may come on your phone and simply you may, without thinking, you may go and click the notification. So whether that is required now or can we see it later or not, so much of thought process doesn't go. So in our life, the Anukulyasya Sankalpam and Pratikulyasya Varjanam, accepting the favorable and actually avoiding or rejecting the unfavorable, these things can be done on impulses level also, right? So whether that is really anukul, whether that is really favorable, whether that is really unfavorable or not, most of the times when we take decisions based on impulses, that time we don't know what is right and what is wrong. So this is one way of doing it. Now this way, it, it is known as doing without intelligence. That means we are not giving constant thought whether to do it or not but we are doing it. So that is why sometimes, you know, when we, when we feel like saying something to something, then someone to something, then we just say it without thinking. So most of the part of our life actually goes 
either through impulses or instincts now what is instincts means they are like default programs just like when you are traveling you know if you are traveling and you see a temple outside then suddenly you will like do like this right or you do like this so what is happening uh, you are actually programmed this so whenever you see a temple you have been doing like this that is why when you are traveling you are not planning that you know on the way the temple will come then i will just fold my hands like that you are not doing it but when it comes it happens automatically so similarly if someone throws something at you you will just protect yourself so this are the instincts so that means they are default programs now what is the difference between impulses and this inst sorry inst impulses and instincts that is that impulses are not so productive are not so good for us but instincts are most of the times are protective and they are good for us but in this both things there is no conscious intelligence applied before making the choices so when we are talking about this verse anukulyasya sankalpah pratikulyasya varjanam this has to be done consciously and intelligently it is not that we are just doing it without any thinking we deliberate and we contemplate we meditate and then only we make choices and we are not making only conscious choices but we are making consciously and intelligently now how we can do it intelligently because whatever choices we make in bhakti in devotional service that we don't make it based on our own mind that we make it based on the shastras so the scriptures the shastras are our like foundation for us it is like the map so we want to go from this world to the another world we want to go from maya to krishna so this is a journey so if we want to make this journey we want to have a map like how i should go and how i should move ahead so the scriptures all the instructions from the scriptures the gurus and all so those will actually serve as the foundation or like the map and after getting that map also it is not over what we have to do we have to travel on that map according to that map so when we are making the choices what is favorable what is unfavorable that should not be done whimsically okay that should be done based on the scriptures guru sadhu shastra so this frame of references we have to use then only we have to make choices then one more important thing is that purpose brings brings perspective that means why we are in bhakti that has to be clear and then only we will make the choices now for example let us say someone is coming to listen to the class okay now those who are coming to the class everyone may have a different perspective or different purpose why they are coming to class some people may be interested in philosophy so they want to learn the philosophy and they want to study the shastras very scrutinizingly so they coming to the class so that they can understand more about them okay some people may come because they like the kirtan so they tolerate the class because they wanted to hear the kirtan so they feel ecstatic in the kirtan and that is the main important part of the class and some people may come for the class to socialize that means not in a negative sense but they feel like you know i can have the people who can care about me who can give good suggestions about me so for that association for that socializing i am coming to the class now the, there are three categories which i told first is for the philosophy second is for the kirtan and third is for the association now when the person who wanted to understand the philosophy he has this purpose why he is coming to the class now when he comes to the class he has a purpose that he want to understand philosophy nicely so what he will do how he will make the choices he'll try to sit in a place where there will be less disturbance he will try to sit in front okay he want to be near to the speaker so that he can focus more so he will not sit at the door or something because from the door people will be coming and going and it will be disturbing so he will sit there and he will put his mobile in silent or he'll put make out the notes so how he is making anukulyasya sankalpam and pratikulyasya varjanam based on what he wanted to do so coming to the class is one activity and the purpose why he is coming if that is clear based on that he will make choices and the other person who may like to have the kirtan 
so for kirtan he might be interested and focused but after that he may not think much about it and the other people who are coming for the socialization he will also make his own anukuliyasa sankalpam and pratikuliyasa varjanam okay so this example why we are giving because at every moment at every situation we make choices so here if we do not have a clear purpose why we are here then our choices will also vary so if we are coming for a philosophy and to understand it then our choices will be different if we are coming to just have a kirtan our choices will be different if we are coming only for association our choices will be different so like that things will vary now this may look like you know uh, too much of analysis of what we are doing but this is what we automatically do it now what we are automatically doing that is only helpful to certain extent but what we have to do we should not do things automatically we have to consciously choose the things right so many of you might be when you are going to the class you might be automatically going and sitting in the front and you try to focus on the uh, you know the speaker and what he is saying so what you are doing automatically right now is you have made constant choices throughout the time that is why you are making it automatic right now okay so three things i show told one is that we make choices based on instincts impulses and conscious intelligence and what should be the basis for our conscious intelligence that is shastras and even to study shastras even to apply everything what has to be clear the purpose has to be clear so based on the purpose we will have the perspective and based on that we will make the choices now apart from that also there are three circles where we make choices one is like we heard about the tritapa that means the three kleshas adhyatmik adhi bautik and adhi daivik so let us consider these three things as three circles one is adhyatmik that is related to body and mind so let us consider it as a psychophysical so this is one circle where we have to make choices and the second is that adhi bhautik that means related to other living beings so this is one circle where we have to make choices and the third circle is the adhi daivik so that is let us consider as an environment so we make anukuliyasa sankalpam and pratikuliyasa varjanam in three different circles one is in the related to body and mind second is related to other living beings and third is related to the environment okay so in these three things whichever circle we make any choice that will actually reflect on the other circles also so we'll try to see this with different examples so let us say we are into the body and mind level so what is favorable to our body so that we can practice bhakti so then the clear answer is that we should eat prashadam we should eat sattvic food because if we eat tamasic or you know rajasic food more and more and if we are not eating the prashadam then what will happen our consciousness will be affected and based on our body structure based on our body condition also we have to make choices which if we are eating very spicy food then it may be not be good for our stomach good for not not good for health then if we are eating that spicy food which is not good for our health then what will happen if our health is not good we cannot practice bhakti so when we are making a choice of spicy spicy food or normal food that time what is happening that is impacting our bhakti process also so this thing we are conscious and then intelligently we are making a choice okay and what is sattvic food what is tamasic food what is rajasic food we already know from the bhagavad gita so scriptures are becoming the basis for choosing the food also so similarly we get so many thoughts in our mind okay someone says something good about us someone says bad about us so while we are chanting or while we are working or doing anything these thoughts may come and disturb us so that time also we have to consciously choose which thought will help me to go ahead in bhakti which thought will actually obstruct me if someone said something wrong about me and i am not able to forgive that person then what will happen maybe i am not fighting with that person externally but i am fighting with that person internally how can he say like that i will not forgive him and all 
so we come across so many fights in our life but we have to make choice that which fight i want to pick up okay so when we have a good purpose in our life like you know i want to attain krishna then what will happen is based on that purpose we will see is it so important to think about who said what even if it is good thing what will happen if i if we keep on contemplating and meditating on all the good things people say about us then our pride may come up okay if you are thinking about all the bad things what people have said about us then what will happen we will get anger and hatred so both the things are not favorable so when we have a clear purpose that you know i want to utilize my consciousness to serve krishna then we can make a choice what is favorable and what is not favorable so those who are bad to me i may deal with them okay but i can make a distance also i need not contemplate so much about them so similarly i told about body what is good for my body so that is only i will take so mentally what is good for us what is not good for us we have to check and on a bodily level also on a physical levels also what i should eat what i should not eat we will make so on the adhyatmic side we are making this choices and when we make this choices what will happen this will reflect in the other circles also so when we talk about adhi bhautik sorry adhyatmik sorry adhyatmik we have told body and mind now it is adhi bhautik it is about other living beings so what kind of association i want i do i want those people who will elevate my consciousness or do i want to associate with the people who will pull me down so there will be like chaitanya mahaprabhu said asat sanga tyaga ei vaishnava achara so they those who are not you know favorable to bhakti those who cannot push us towards the bhakti we should give up their association now giving up their association it does not mean that we don't talk to them or we just reject them because some of our people in our life some maybe family or siblings or our office colleagues and all we cannot directly reject them okay so rejecting their association means we are not getting influenced by their methodology or their philosophy their materialistic philosophy so what we are doing we are choosing good association right that we will try to associate with the devotees and even in the devotees also we will try to be with those devotees who can help us more in elevating our consciousness because in the devotees community also there will be people in different modes right some people who are in the mode of ignorance they might think like you know you know why people are fighting sometimes you know devotees also fight now if we are serving krishna then we should not focus on the fights like that they might tell so by discussing too many things about the fights they are actually focusing on that only so whatever we want in krishna consciousness that can be available just like krishna is kalpataru wish fulfilling tree so similarly krishna's movement is also kalpataru so whatever we want we will get it if we want to focus on the fights there can be some fights with between the devotees some disagreements and we will start focusing on that so we are in the mode of ignorance that is why our complete focus is there only if we are in the mode of passion then we will think like you know some people in iskon or this moment they may come because they want to become popular or they just want to pick up the philosophy and they want to make their own thing so like that some people may come like that they will say so either they will say or they will have an intention of that so this is one kind and another kind is people in the mode of goodness who might say like you know here are good people are there i can elevate my conscious i consciousness i can live a better life so with that intention some people will be coming or with that intention i am coming so like that people will be there and there will be some people who are in the shuddha sattva who are in the transcendental they say if i come to iskon if i come to temple i can have krishna okay there can be many things okay because iskon or krishna consciousness movement is in the material world so there will be contamination some or other way but i have to choose what is pure so here what is happening we are making our choices based on who is in the what mode and where we are also so if we are in the mode of ignorance our choices will be in the mode of ignorance if we are in the mode of passion mode of passion will be our choices so we have to have proper association we have to elevate ourselves from wherever we are and we should utilize our association so that we can go closer to krishna so while choosing association whether in the devotees community or the non devotees community 
what we have to do we have to choose people who can bring good out of us who can bring krishna consciousness out of us who can elevate us and take us closer to krishna then we talk about the scriptural study also because we also associate with the scriptural study so sometimes in the scriptures there will be different different descriptions like if you go to bhagavatam then in the fifth canto there will be cosmology okay different planetary systems the hellish planets the heavenly planets and the distance and the different rivers and the different uh, oceans so so much of uh, you know descriptions are given and sometimes we are not able to comprehend like you know how can this be possible you know and why these things are needed to me why there has to be this much of you know astronomical explanation in the bhagavatam so sometimes we will not be able to digest the figures and the facts so that time what we have to do see our purpose is not to become the phd's in the cosmology but our purpose is to be krishna conscious so if we think that something is very complicated and we are not able to understand right now then we can park it we can say that okay fine now i am able to not able to understand and not able to digest so i'll keep it aside and later point of time maybe i'll make sense of the things because if we are thinking that let me make the sense of these things right now only and as long as i don't make sense of these things i will not go ahead then it is not favorable what is favorable we are studying bhagavatam or we are going through all this description because ultimately we want to remember krishna and why the cosmology is given why this all the planetary systems are being explained in bhagavatam so that we can know that in the different parts of this material world there are people who are attached to krishna and there are people who are to going towards krishna so everywhere this bhakti is being practiced so that is why we should also practice so this is the central meaning of sharing that so if we don't get this and if we are stuck with the figures and facts then what will happen we actually not doing the favorable thing so while reading the scriptures if we do not understand something what we have to understand that this may be require more intelligence and more maturity maybe in the later point of time i can understand so let me go ahead so while associating with the scriptures and the people we have to make the choices which will help us to go towards krishna not to go away from krishna or not to get stuck okay and then when we talk about adi daivik that means choosing the environment so certain things we can change but certain things we cannot change so if you are living in a very cold country or a very cold place then if your job is there and if you do not have any options then what you have to do based on that particular environment you have to make changes okay i may not be able to get up so early in the morning because it is like freezing cold so can i get up little later so some or other way we are making choices based on that you know our purpose is to attain krishna to become more and more krishna conscious so our environments whatever it is there based on that we have to make choices just like now i am sitting in this room so this room's roof is like you know the uh, what we say the sheets are there the iron sheets are there so when there will be rain there will be lot of sound okay so i cannot focus on the class i cannot listen you cannot listen me so what i will do when it is raining i will not sit in this place i will sit down where the uh, you know where the noise will be less so environment i cannot stop the rain but i can make choices based on the weather condition so why we are discussing all this because every point of time in every environment and every circle whatever choices we make that will actually make us go ahead in krishna consciousness so this has to be done very consciously till now we might be thinking and doing some things on an automatic way or with little thinking but from now on what we have to do we have to be very much conscious so i just summarize what i spoke so i spoke on anukulyasya sankalpah and pratikulyasya varjanam so varjanam not only means that you know we are rejecting the things but we may be avoiding the things right now just like when the when i use the example of cosmology if we are not able to understand right now we can keep it aside for right now and then we can come back later also and then we have to, uh, talked about every moment is a making choices so we make uh, choices in the sleep also right so and how we make the choices in three levels instincts impulses and conscious intelligence and what should be the foundation for conscious intelligence that is scriptures so what is anukulyasya what is pratikulyasya we have to learn from the scriptures and we have to have the purpose first clear why i am here 
then only based on that we can make the choices so i have used an example of how some people come for the class in different modes and then i have told about the three circles that is adhyatmika adi bhautika adi daivika so adhyatmika adhyatmika means to related to body and mind what kind of diet we should have on a bodily level and on a mental level also and on the adhyatmik uh, sorry adi bhautik what kind of association we should choose what kind of people we have to choose in the devotees communities and in the non devotees community also and also during the study of the scriptures also what we have to pick up and what not and then we spoke about the environment that is adi daivika so based on the different environments we have to make choices so that that can lead us to krishna consciousness so this is a little bit about anukuliyasya sankalpaha and pratikuliyasya 